great to have Cybos in London. You know, uh, Barclays is a particular British bank. We've been here for uh, some 328 years, actually older than the Bank of England. Uh, so having uh, all these players uh, internationally uh, in the payment space to come to London to talk about the issues that the industry faces is great for us. It reflects the global reach of London, which in turn reflects the global reach of Barclays, and so welcome. You know, uh, both, I would say. Um, uh, we spend a lot of time uh, uh, working with fintechs. We allow uh, technology startup companies and small businesses to actually connect with our, with our systems and our network to see what sort of take up they may receive out in, uh, out in the marketplace. We have partnered with a number of uh, fintechs, but obviously they're also trying to get their little slices of the financial world. In many cases that involves Barclays. So I think a big bank like Barclays needs to engage uh, fintechs. Uh, in many ways they are innovators seeking scale. We as a major bank, it's a scale player seeking innovation. So that means sometimes we'll compete and sometimes we'll partner and, and indeed invest in fintechs as we've done quite a bit over the last couple of years. That's a big question. Uh, I think uh, in many ways we've gone from managing finance to uh, an industry that is increasingly managing data. Um, uh, you know, when I was growing up and you opened up a magazine uh, looking at the safety and soundness of a bank, you'd generally see a photo of a vault with big, thick concrete walls and steel piping and whatnot. Now that data is so important, cybersecurity uh, and the virtual vault of protecting and holding data of our clients and of the financial markets becomes perhaps the most important security issue that a bank faces. And then data just opens up uh, the entire world of finance and what does it mean for customers and clients and governments and institutions, the person on the street. We have so much data now available because banks very much are the center of a lot of economic activity. So we need to protect that data, we need to understand that data, we need to use data in a way that's beneficial for our customers and our, and our clients. But data is going to revolutionize what banking means over the next uh, couple of decades. Any modern major financial institution with global reach has got to be very attuned to the geopolitical issues facing the world today. You know, there is to a certain extent uh, uh, a balkanization of finance globally. Uh, we want to be a global bank delivering global solutions to our customers. But we have to recognize we've set up a whole new legal structure to operate in the United States a couple years ago. We set up what's called a ring fence bank here in the United Kingdom. It's the largest de novo bank ever created in Great Britain. We've just set up what will be by the end of the year the largest bank in Ireland as we, as we get uh, adjusted for Brexit. We made all of our branches in Europe branches of the bank in Ireland as opposed to branches here. So the geopolitical landscape is always moving and always creating uh, new challenges for business people. But I think we have the flexibility of the systems and the people and the organizational structure so we can deal with what comes our way geopolitically. Over 90% of the things we do today across the UK is totally automated. Problems of human errors go away. So it makes the whole system faster, safer, sounder. Uh, so automation is, is critical if we're gonna take advantage of technology that is, uh, that is coming our way. But I'd also say automation does something else very uh, interesting. In many ways, it's elevated the importance of human interaction. You know, one of the fascinating data points about Barclays we, is we were the first bank in the world to adopt ATM machines uh, some 50 years ago. ATM machines are really a robot to take the place of a teller. If you fast forward from 50 years ago to today, Barclays has more tellers today than it did 50 years ago. And on an, an inflation-adjusted basis, they're actually paid more than they were 50 years ago. And one of the reasons is, uh, you know, we've learned that the highest um, uh, correlation between customer satisfaction uh, and what they do in a branch, for instance, with the bank 
is not with automation, it's not with how you know, fancy or fast that ATM machine is. It is the empathy of our employees in that branch that deal with people that come in to do their daily banking. So uh, it doesn't take the human factor out. I think it allows the human factor to accomplish more, but when, when we bring the empathy into the equation, that's what really takes our client engagement scores up so much. Payments industry in many ways may be the battlefield of finance for the next couple of decades. Uh, you find fintech in the payment space, now I think you're going to find big tech in the payment space. And obviously payments is a critical value proposition we have for our customers and, and, and our, our clients. You know, roughly a third of the GDP of the United Kingdom goes through the payment pipes of Barclays. That's an, that's an enormous responsibility we have. That payment system, one, has to work. Uh, uh, people have to believe in its integrity and its, and its safety. But also, as you had the earlier question about data, you know, payments in many ways is the originator of much of the data that will be used for us to enhance our financial or bank offering to our customers and clients. So payments is critical. It's what we all need to be focused on. It's going to change. It is changing. Uh, and, I, and I think if you're not in front of the innovation of how payments is going to occur and how regulators are going to look at payments, um, uh, that's not a place you want to be. There was a great piece in the early 90s by McKinsey that said that businesses were moving from physical capital like a steel mill to intellectual capital like a bank. And their line was, if the value of a firm is driven by its intellectual capital, uh, then the war for talent is a critical issue that all major businesses should be focused on. And in my career, uh, uh, the war for talent, the most effective factor in winning that war for talent is embracing diversity and creating an inclusive environment. Uh, and I feel very passionate about it. You make uh, you know, the place where you were comfortable for a gay man to be on a Wednesday afternoon as he is on a Saturday afternoon uh, uh, with his friends, you will engender enormous loyalty. You create an, an environment where a single mom working with kids at home can feel fine leaving on a Tuesday afternoon at 2 o'clock to take care of a son or daughter, you'll have an extremely loyal employee. So I think it's great that Cybos is looking at this. Embracing diversity and inclusion is the best way to win the war for talent. <laughs>